It's giving Jordan a list. <clears throat> and this one? You can burn incense if you feel more comfortable. Camellia, to soften the nerves. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my huge channel, everybody. Oh, bonjour, because otherwise I would just be a national disgrace to the French soil I'm stepping on. But by the way, it's absolutely my fault. I don't speak French yet. Um, because naturally you need a speaking partner when you speak French and since I only speak with myself and spend my time just searching for certain archive fashion pieces um, I don't have to speak that much investigating like but that's not today's topic today is a big day it's the first time ever I asked somebody to participate on a video and I don't count my sisters or fathers or mothers interruptions and bringing inside vegetable tables while I'm filming because that's the only way they can show affection to their child because everything else is being considered as a weakness or my sister's interruptions on correcting me on the correct suing terminology because she knows everything better. She's the firstborn and the smart child who made it possible for me to actually start a YouTube channel because being considered a failure is also some sort of freedom because nobody expects anything from you. So you can do stuff like opening a YouTube channel. So thank you, Abla. So today, as I said, I invited somebody and not just anybody. It's somebody of precious blood, somebody who is superior to any of us, somebody who is cultivated and molded by perfectionism, aesthetics, beauty. I'm speaking about a French person. I'm just kidding, of course, it's just any kind of French person. So since I live here for over a year now, I just figured that there is something about Frenchness. All the cliches I've heard all my life in uh, Germany are kind of true and kind of not true. And I always wanted to speak like with a French person and just ask them certain fashion questions, which I also do sometimes. And since it's super interesting to get the perspective of what the French really perceive and see the world in terms of fashion, I thought it would be interesting to make something like a questionnaire. And I chose somebody who worked in fashion, who worked in French luxury and is has a crazy view on fashion as well. So let's see what this person has to say. I think it's going to be interesting, but to keep it as discreet as possible, I'm keeping Monsieur uh, anonymous um, to avoid all kinds of racism. No, of course not. But, um, yeah, somebody doesn't want to show their face. It's not easy to be here. So we're going to start now. I asked you guys also on Instagram what kind of questions you would be interested in. I have to say, I tend to forget how high your IQ is because there were so deep fashion questions, philosophical questions. And I thought you guys would ask stuff like, why are they always eating croissant? Like, why is there so much butter in it? And they were like super investigative, crazy questions, which I'm honored to receive because it shows me that you are so smart. You guys are very, very, very smart. So I took some of those questions. So thank you to everybody who sent me some, some inspiration. And um, I added some myself because I am myself a very basic person. And of course, before we start, you should never forget if you haven't subscribed yet and you like what I do here, and even if you don't like it, you should just show affection. Uh, don't forget to subscribe or check in into my Discord channel where we have a lot of fashion loving, addicted people, worse than I am, better than I am, all kinds of people. So I will have the links of my Discord chat um, and my uh, Instagram as well down below where I share a bit more of my personal style, which is, as you can see, impeccably creative. Like, I'm so on guard in my day-to-day -day life, you will see it. So don't forget to do this and let's start. So how do you want to be called, like Louis the 16th or 18th or something? So, starting with a trivial question on my side, to check if the persona in front of me is really that reflected about the essence of what he is. And the question, as trivial as it sounds, I will expect a very differentiated answer by you. And I don't want to hear anything like everybody's envying us, but why does everybody hate you? That's not really nice. 
honestly, I, I don't really understand. Um, I think it's a, a very Parisian thing. I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a French thing because where I come from, uh, people are really uh, heartwarming and welcoming. I come from Lille, northern France, and we're very welcoming people. But in Paris, I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very, I mean, a big tourism capital. Uh, you have a lot of tourists every day, and I think the the waiters and the waitresses and the taxi drivers are so over people coming every day to their places and uh, asking random stuff and trying. And it's 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 a pity because I I, I, under, I understand everyone wants to try to speak French, but I think they get triggered by all the cute tourists trying to say bonjour, s'il vous plaît. Um, and, but I guess, um, I guess Paris is a city of love, but you cannot love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see some slight self-reflection here. I think, um, that's kind of true. And also it kind of fits with my experience here. I think Paris has like 70 million tourists every year and the own population is like 2 million. And I think 1 million of these are probably not even Parisian, but like, like you are from Lille. So yeah, you get a lot of like mean and mad people who don't want any um, people from outside inside. It changes the city landscape, but also I'm like, Paris is profiting from these tourists a lot as well. So it's like, don't be mean to the people that bring you business let's start with the real questions this was just my disclaimer question because i needed to check here first how okay this person is with being bashed by us um i had one really good question by one of you guys uh sorry i did not write down the names but i'm very proud of these questions so thank you very much to anybody who sent these out I think this is a very general question, so that's maybe a bit harder to answer, but I just want you to be like super natural in your answer and don't think too much. I haven't sent the questions to you before, so it will be like a very natural answer, which is important to me because this is a very genuine channel. Are we speaking about feelings? So one question that came, it's a good start. What is quintessentially French in fashion to you? That's um, a very interesting question because are we speaking the origins of French fashion or are we speaking the contemporary fashion, the people we see in the street? Because the, the French fashion is usually thought about all the big French houses, fashion houses. The, the, the people, the, the French, I don't really think we have um, a, a strong identity. I think overall, um, most of the people in the street like good taste because we can give some looks sometimes <laughs> and some bad looks and i think um most of the french want to uh, stay in the norm and uh, probably a bit norm core sometimes um so i think the strength of the french is to be able to borrow some pieces from the french the americans uh, the Asians, I would say Japanese, uh, Japanese fashion is growing a lot in Paris right now and mixing and matching. Uh, people are very much like focused on wearing vintage clothing and not only for the sustainability part. First of all, I think the main reason is still financial, unfortunately, because Paris is just very, very, very expensive to maintain a living. So um, I feel like secondhand clothing is like the best version to dress and also the people just love to combine different centuries and that, that's what I see a lot like on girls and also guys um, that was pretty new to me to see so much secondhand and also of course because of the trend right now which is kind of getting a bit toxic but that's true it's very French to be um, able to combine like very different things together this is a cool question what do you think of quiet luxury Oh, this one is actually <laughs> very interesting uh, because um, I think it's it's very much into the French culture, the quiet luxury. Um, we even have um, a specific word for this that we call, we say bobo, which means uh, bourgeois bohème. 
And bourgeois, 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 bohème. bourgeois bohème. Yeah. Bohème. And this is this literally means uh, dressing up as a bohemian, <laughs> but being a bourgeois. Ah, that's so cool. so it li literally means I'm I, I want to be um, part of the cool people, but I'm rich as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and it's usually criticized in Paris because um, there is a lot okay. of these people, uh, and um, I I'm our our American friends who call them who would call them nipple babies. Uh, it's 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 of course a bit different, but it's so it's really part of our culture. It's 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 rude to talk about money. Uh, we don't talk about salary. Um, yeah, you you don't you don't want to run around with a crazy luxury car. Um, I would say the the only way you are allowed to show your that you have means is having probably a luxury bag or you can have a fancy car, but you you you're not gonna see. It's not very French to run oh, around with a Ferrari. It's, I mean, you see way more, for example, in Milan. Than in Paris, like fancy cars, you don't see so many fancy cars here. No, and also I think yeah, it's it's part of our culture. However, um, it, it's changing. I think um, it the 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 word quiet luxury is interesting because it's actually not quiet anymore. <laughs> It's uh, you can see the, the guys running around in Loro Piana head to toe in Paris and it doesn't scream quite luxury. It just screams. I have a lot of money. And, and I don't think also I don't think it's very French to spend a lot of money in clothing. Um, Why do you make us pay so much then for it? <laughs> uh, this is a question you should ask to um, the big guys. Um, OK, bonjour, ça va. Next question, which uh, turns on a bit the patriotism radar. Italy versus France. Who wins the fashion game? Try to be reflective. <laughs> the excellent question. Um, actually, and it's going to answer to your question right before. Uh, Italy versus France. I think 90% of the goods product produced in fashion are made in Italy. And sorry, guys, but this is the sad truth. And I'm going to ask to my Italian neighbors, why do you make us pay so much for production? <laughs> why is it so expensive to produce? But they at least produce it, you know, so they can ask for the money. They're like, yeah, we produce it. You, you do the beautiful campaigns, the French. Right? No, honestly, I truly believe that um, nowadays, uh, if you look at all the products uh, in the market, everything is made in Italy because there is a real savoir-faire. Um, so um, yeah, and actually I just came back from a business trip to visit our factory, not in closing, but it's a factory who produces super high end uh, furniture and it's based in Italy and not going to lie, the Italians know what they're doing. <laughs> so but this is only in terms of production and quality, what you said right now. Yeah. Fashion, like when you look at the fashion brands, like I don't know, Gucci, Prada, Bottega, versus maybe Louis Dior, Chanel. So if we look, um, if we look at, for example, Hermes, this is a quintessence of um, luxury, I would say, and French luxury because it's uh, well made in France, and it's a good example of why we're famous uh, on the market however for the rest of the um, of the brands if you look uh, at any brand uh, uh, part of either lvmh or Kering, most of the products are made in italy and so actually there is a um, wrong perception of people thinking one person in a brand is doing all the work of course there is a design team as you mentioned as I worked uh, in, a, um, in a fashion studio, uh, I can tell you there are a lot of people from different nationalities. So there are a lot of talents out there and it's not only one. But yeah, not going to lie, the Italians are still really good at what they're doing. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Okay, surprising. 
Yes, a lot of Italians in this industry, I would say. Uh, and also why, why there are a lot of Italians, uh, because the factories are Italians and it's also it's very convenient to have okay. wor uh, it Italian people working uh, because they can talk to the, um, to, to the okay. factories really easily. Yes. I didn't think of that, actually. So you say Italy wins here? Yes. Wow. OK, I was honestly not expecting this. Wow. Um, another question that is very funny. Um, what do you think of TikTok videos that teach you on how to look French? Like this overall how to appear more French, being reduced to certain pieces even, not only design features, but pieces. Like, what do you think about these TikToks? Like running through Paris and how to look French. Sorry in advance for uh, the shots fired, but... <laughs> Four letters, SMCP, Sandro, Maesh, Cody, Pierlo. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Companies I, are being attacked here. I would add um, Zadig Evolter, Cézanne. Um, I don't know. I think it, these work for the majority of the people. And yeah, if you think uh, you look stylish in this clothing, it's not true. I mean, but this is what you mentioned are like the French fast fashion companies. So like, I, I really feel like H&M is not as big in Paris as like in many other countries. Like, I mean, I, I grew up in Germany and H&M is like, like water and bread and afterwards comes H&M. And in Paris, even though I have to say like your fast fashion retailers are way more expensive and it is still fast fashion officially. Uh, I'm pretty sure about Sandro Marge, uh, Claude Pialo, I think it's also all the same group. And I feel like Sandro, for example, really sells certain aesthetics. I, I figured they have the marine look, you know, the the cute sailor look. They have the Chanel girl look, and then they have like slightly the disrupted look. Like, but do you really feel like um, these TikToks and stuff are feeding, are being fed by these brands, or what do you think overall about people wanting to dress French? You know, like right now, honestly, I, nobody sees this, but he's wearing a striped shirt and has a scarf and. It, it looks like so cliche to me right now because I feel like it's a beret, it's a striped shirt, it's a pair of jeans, which makes you look like super, I don't know, Brigitte Bardot from the 70s. Um, what do you think about people that want to appear French? To be very honest, I think nowadays uh, fr the French don't have a very strong identity in terms of uh, fashion. A lot of people um, think Paris is the capital of fashion. Um, I would agree, but business-wise, if you if you really want to have this kind of French look, there are brands who still produce in France. And I think French women uh, during winter, and that's funny because we had this talk the the other day. Um, French women will not go for this very puffy jacket, but they will always prefer their wool coats. A lot of French women will dress with skirts during winter with um bare legs some <laughs> i think we uh, french women i mean okay so in in a sense what you say is like um no matter what weather condition like french women always prioritize their personal style so i mean that's absolutely true they're very rarely women that wear like puffer coats that everybody in the world wears i think it's slightly growing with the new generation but I always see coats, like everybody is running around in coats and long boots and a skirt. It's very, very feminine overall, I would say as well. Yeah, comfort is not the most biggest driver here. It's definitely the aesthetics and keeping that, keeping that going. Yeah, so you say it's horrible when it's being um, connected to the fast fashion retailers of, of French brands, but there are ways to just show off, you say, like cleavage and legs, and then you look very French. You're literally nodding right now. That was meant ironically, but OK. Another question that goes into this direction. Are you playing with your phone right now? No. Can you take this seriously? What do you think of berets? Like people wearing berets um, for fashion reasons. I just want to hear a very first mind thought that you have. What do you think of berets? Good job, guys. Keep supporting the local economy. No, actually, it's uh, it's it's cute. It's cute. <laughs> leave me, leave us alone. You really like it? I mean, I thought 
it's a disgrace to every French persona to see a tourist and a belly. No, I think it's nice. Oh <laughs> Keep my goodness. <laughs> I'm shocked. You're cute, guys. Keep doing it. <laughs> okay. So um, I have to say there are different headpiece forms. Like, I, I mean, I love the Margiela berets because they're a bit more... They look a bit more military style. I love headpieces, as you might have realized. But apparently berets are being perceived as something cute. So everybody who was planning to buy one for five euros on Rue de Rivoli, because they're, you know, where you can get the little Eiffel Towers for your keychains, they also have several berets. Go get it. It's, it's, it's apparently uh, cute. If you ask me, you burn those berets, but... The French say you're cool, so you, you go with that. Um, the next question, questioner. So let's say Paris is the fashion capital. I think this is something we cannot discuss anymore. Um, it's, it's pretty clear on that, that the most important, according to the world of fashion, fashion shows are being held in Paris and it's growing, it's growing and even more designers from all over the world are showing in Paris and Paris again. So um, Paris is the most important fashion capital when we think of the runways. If that is so, which city do you think is the biggest competitor to Paris? So is, is Paris a fashion capital? Um, if we talk about business, yes, of course. Um, everything, I mean, if you look at LVMH brands, carrying brands, all those brands have their uh, headquarters in Paris. So I would say uh, absolutely uh, that's where the business is uh, being done and where the, the studios are. What people don't see behind, but what's happening behind the scenes of um, Fashion Week is uh, all the buyers coming to the showrooms and um, making their purchases for, uh, for the, the stores all around the world. So yes. But style-wise, um, I will say no, and I truly mean it. Um, I don't think Paris is the capital of fashion. Um, I've had the opportunity to go to Seoul, for example, and everyone was dressing crazy. I would say the norm was way higher than the normal in Paris. This I can definitely um, uh, see as well on the streets of uh, Paris that um, people don't dare so much and, and they're happy with not daring and people look at you weirdly. I mean, it's funny because it's the fashion capital and you really see, but it's only during fashion week that you see crazy good styles on the street. Like you don't see a day to day so much. And sometimes I even figure it out myself and I, I would not call myself, I think I'm still pretty conservative actually when it comes to my aesthetic. But I see people looking weirdly, like, I don't know, um, when I have, like, weird shoes on, like, people look at it. Like, this you don't even experience in Germany anymore, but Paris is, like, very strict concerning their aesthetics. And I absolutely agree when I look, like, at um, Sale Street Style on YouTube, which is one of my favorite things. I'm always, like, always blown away, even if it's absolutely not my aesthetic, I'm always, like wow, that's that's great and that's amazing and this is something I never see. So you would say Seoul, is it? Because there's like London, there's New York. Okay. So um, I picked the example of Seoul, but uh, I think uh, if you, yeah, if you if you look at all, all the videos and all the pictures from New York City also, I think also the people in the US dare a lot and they dare to, to have their uh, own personality. I think in France, we're a bit suppressed in terms of uh, of um, of fashion because you cannot really, really, as you mentioned, you cannot really run around going crazy in in your craziest attire, your craziest pieces. I don't think you can run around wearing full look recoins and feel chill running around in Paris. People will look at you weird. We'll give you a bad look. The grandmas would look, <laughs> will look you, yeah. will look at you weird. So I think my heart goes to Tokyo. Uh, sorry guys, sorry New Yorkers. I I really tried on this one um, because the width of uh, aesthetics uh, in Tokyo is is very wide and very deep. You have very very niche uh, brands and stores that love to curate. Uh, it's crazy actually they love creation 
and any piece they buy they will dig deep to understand how the piece is made and stuff and so on yeah they are going very strong on certain styles but they commit to way more than the parisians do because parisians are very uh it's 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 not boring but it's it's way more reserved and conservative yeah and 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 what's crazy is even in the the arajuku styles uh they also have their niche brands which is crazy (laughs) yeah i would love to go to tokyo so you say tokyo wins but you have a some affection for new york city as well you said so coming to the last two questions what is your most hated fashion trend current fashion trend right now that you see on the streets and where you're like "Uh uh-uh uh uh-uh, uh not not with me. I don't I don't wanna see this. Um okay, I don't I hate bootcut jeans. Okay. I I don't know why we we never asked for them to come back and we see it everywhere. Honestly I I hate them. I and think it's a Y2K trend. Yeah, and the more distressed I actually Y2K I I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and and sorry guys, yeah, it's very personal, but I hate it and I don't think it's cool. But it's very Uh, the, the thing is, yeah, and it looks just clunky. You made Jean-Paul Gaultier, okay? And and when I see when I see all those kids wearing Y2K, I just see old pictures of myself, my brother, and stuff. Honestly, I understand bootcut jeans. I um. It was never my thing as well. And it's true, there are a lot of people in Paris, but since vintage clothing is a big thing, um, bootcut jeans are definitely um, something you see on women's and men's. So, yeah. And uh, honestly, I'm sorry, but for a local one, I fucking hate the sartorials. And the sartorial look like the sartorial look. Yeah. It's a bit like Pitti Uomo looks. Yeah, like, it's, it's just like, some pieces you just need to recycle them you should never wear them you we should <laughs> we forgot about them you should never bring them back but also because they look a bit pretentious because it's like always a head to toe look usually the problem with this style it's usually paired with very political thoughts and oh, okay yes and i really don't like it it's, i think it's, it looks very conservative since it's conservative dressing and yeah, it, what I don't like about it is it's, it, it looks a bit pretentious because you have like a head to toe look like you cannot dress like halfway tutorial. So it's like also like since I don't like anything that is too serious, like why do you take yourself so seriously? Why do you why do you wear so many serious pieces? Like there's nothing hilarious about it. And that's why I personally am not a big fan of it. Yeah. And it has very this um, connotation mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, the politics in the past and a lot of behavior from the past and i I don't think it's cool to wear stuff that some assholes were wearing back in the days you think it's common in paris to dress like that i think it's getting more and more i mean it's more local local parisian thing but yes you see it i see it it's also very italian and and the problem is they hate you. They hate your style. They hate fashion mm. people. They hate fashion. So why should we love them? Destroy them. Destroy <laughs> them. <laughs> okay. And last question, which makes sense. I don't, I don't know if I always need the microphone. I, yeah, yeah. So the last question of the day. It's, it's I can't. Cream, huh? So we talked about the most hated. What is your most loved style trend? And I know you have a very different aesthetic than the common Parisian person, but like try to try to embed it in some Frenchness. Actually, one of the fashion trends I'm the most proud of is French work jackets, uh, also known as bleu de travail in French. Bleu de travail? Yeah, means... uh, The blue of the work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, The blue work jackets. Um, I love them. I have three of them i could buy one more of them because um you have so many different work jackets different colors different fabrics actually actually it's funny because my my friend uh, junpei who is a japanese designer in paris and in tokyo um it just made a collab with a brand called le sans pareil which is a 
a French word and a French uh, company that was bought by uh, Japanese, and they're recreating work jackets. Ah, so it's like a French Japanese collab. Yes, kind of. and I think it's very practical. You can wear them every day. Uh, you never look bad in them. I like it too. Now that I, now, now that you speak about it, um, the blue work jacket it, it's crazy. Like every um, flea market that has clothing, there are like tons of these because it's actual workwear, right? But which kind of work did you wear it for? Like what kind of in this? Like it's not construction work. It's it looks a bit like since it has very often like paint stains. It looks like painters and stuff. It could be it could be from working in a garage. Working, we are a bit in the northern part of France. Uh, we were um, mining charcoal. We have a very strong industrial background, so literally everyone was wearing work jackets. Oh yeah, and it's a very striking blue. It's it's pretty or, cool. Or even onesie. You you onesie. will f uh. you will find a lot of onesie uh, in the flea markets also. And there are a lot of different forms. And now that I think of Japanese fashion, yes, you have so much work wear inspired and western work wear i would say it makes sense definitely that there's like a collaboration between it in some sort i also feel like the french reserved look is also like very japanese that's also why a lot of japanese people like a lot of uh french brands because they're kind of liked and being like very soft uh in the design but still like um beautifully made kind of so what you said at the very beginning that it's not very daring in Paris and people are pretty conservative that's true but still the pieces are not bad in general I mean what's your aesthetic is a different question I think that's that's funny cool that was the last question and I think almost all of these questions were by you guys I I think it was interesting I think how, how did you feel did you feel like you were deep diving into your thoughts of Frenchness I think I so sorry to not let you speak, even though I asked you something. But I'm very surprised about your answers, if I may say that. Very surprised um, that you're so reflected about the French um, fashion world. Yeah, you're aware that Paris is a very strong capital of fashion in terms of money, I would say. But in terms of style, it's still like Tokyo, Seoul, New York City, London. Uh, I think Milan is very similar to Paris in terms of um, ruling now, everywhere where you have old heritage houses where the creative directors are still alive. That's why Milan is also pretty strict, like Emporio Armani, like Armani is still alive and Prada, is, thank God, uh, still there. But if the creative director who initially founded a brand is usually still controlling a company, it's very strict. But um, since in Paris, everybody is dead already, you have young creative directors that change the way it is going. So this is also something that is a bit different from these two old school fashion cities. How did how did you like it? C'était super. Merci tout bas. Uh, I hope um, uh, no. Honestly, it was um, it was great to to speak up a bit about my take because uh, I think um, uh, the French I, are hated because they are very proud. Uh, I am proud, but. We we need to step back a bit on uh, on on some fashion topics, uh, and uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. My Turkish teacher also always used to say, "Pride is the worst trait a human being can have." <laughs> it's okay to be proud sometimes. No, it's not. Actually, not. No, it's fine. Uh, cool. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel again. I will abuse you with burning that into your brain don't forget to subscribe follow me on discord or come into the chat if you want to have like-minded people like you who are deep into fashion and have sh show us your newest socks you bought you know that where you're like crazy sock and you want recognition for that because none of your family members will support you or your friends but we are your friends so that's why discord is cool or my instagram or i need to post on tiktok i think um i hope you liked it see you to the next one a new year has started nothing will change guys stay as you are and stay cool